Live from WBFF in Baltimore, this is Fox 45 Morning News. Our children take on a lot of responsibility when they head to college, even if you're paying for it. Just ahead, the key legal documents students need to sign and parents need to check out before they return to campus. Well, guess what? Towson University is moving in today. In just a couple of hours, University of Maryland, Morgan, and Coppin State, they're moving into their dorms tomorrow. While there is a lot going on for students and, of course, their parents and guardians, it's important to get all legal questions squared away before the pressure of classes really begins. Associate with J.D. Katz, Carla Mamana, is joining us now this morning to detail all the key documents that parents and, really, students need to sign. Carla, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's nice to be here today and answer these important questions. There, there are. In fact, um, I have a, uh, a senior going to be a senior in high school, and I also have a junior in college right now. And it's some of these documents that you kind of, as a parent, you assume, all right, well, we're, if we're footing the bill, we should be allowed to get a lot of things taken away here. And then you hear the term FERPA. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means and why it's so important to look at all the different colleges? Because they all have different FERPA plans. Yes. Uh, the FERPA is the Federal Education Educational Right to Privacy Act, and it applies when your child turns 18, they're an adult. So as parents, often they don't realize you don't have the right to access your child's academic records without permission. So FERPA is a federal rule uh, that gives an authorization that you can get from the U.S. Department of Education and most universities, colleges, and also post-secondary uh, schools in the trades require. Um, so, I'm sorry. No, no, that's good. And it, it seems like each college has a, a different type of policy or acceptability for it slightly. But there's also a whole lot of other documents that come out. That one kind of, it seems like that one kind of gets parents a little bit more. And then you shift to, okay, well, we're, you're on my insurance plan, so I know what's going on with your health insurance. But that, again, also falls under they're 18, and they don't have to share everything. Really, in Maryland, they didn't have to share anything since they were 14, but they don't have to share anything at 18 either. Correct. So it's very important with the, the health and medical decision making to get what we call a medical power of attorney mm -hmm. um, where the parents are usually appointed and that gives them access. Because again, under what is another federal regulation, HIPAA, the Health Information Portability Accountability Act, um, that protects your medical records. So they can't be disclosed without that authorization. So that's also a very important authorization uh, to obtain. Um, and each state might have something a little different mm. about that and the requirements for that. But it helps parents. You can't, without your child's medical records and access to them, you can't make informed decisions in case of an emer emergency. Uh, where can we reach out for parents? Where can they reach out and find more information, maybe contact you? Um, they can reach us at uh, jdcats.com. They can reach me at Carla at jdcats.com or 240-743-5417. Um, um, it's always a good idea. You can find these forms online, but to have an attorney review them um, for correctness and to make sure they're legally binding. With J.D. Katz, Carla Mamona, thank you so much. We appreciate you giving some of your expertise this morning and easing some parents and some students as they're heading off to college. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. And good luck to all those parents and students out there. Yes.